Hi, and welcome back to another video on Waveform 11.5. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to record, edit, and export a simple voiceover using Waveform. And I'm gonna keep it really simple. I'm using Waveform free, and I'm going to get started by just recording some voiceover. This will be a short voiceover. I'm just gonna read something from the manual. I haven't rehearsed it that way, I'll probably make some mistakes that we'll need to edit out. These techniques work if you're doing voiceover for commercials, voiceover for YouTube videos, or a podcast, any of those situations. The other really popular thing is audiobook production. Same type of workflows apply, except obviously you'd have much longer recordings in that situation. So to get started, I'm going to enable the input. I have created a basic project from the default. I just deleted the extra tracks. I'm gonna click on the input area here and choose my voiceover microphone. I'm just using the very same mic that I'm using for recording the video voiceover. I need to arm it for recording by clicking there on the track input. And I will start recording by clicking down here on the transport record button. R is the keyboard shortcut that you could use to do that from a keyboard shortcut. So I'm gonna click this. I'm gonna start reading from chapter eight. And here we go. Chapter eight, the edit tab. In this chapter, you will learn the layout of the edit tab. The edit tab is where most of the action occurs during recording, editing, and producing your song. The Edit tab is where most of the action occurs during recording, editing, and producing your song. This chapter is important as you will learn the terminology for the waveform interface and objects used throughout the rest of this book. All right. This chapter is important as you will learn the terminology for waveform. This chapter is important as you will learn the terminology for the waveform interface and objects used throughout the rest of this book. Note, the keyboard shortcuts used in this chapter are based on the alternative key mappings under the settings, blah, 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 blah. That's not even true anymore, so I need to edit this out of the manual and I don't need it in this voiceover. Parts of the waveform edit. The edit tab is made up of four main parts, the browser, the arrangement, the mixer, and the controls panel. The browser. The waveform browser rely, the waveform browser resides along the left side of the edit. All right, I have stopped the recording. That is enough. We'll go back to the beginning of this and I'm going to show you the setup that I'm using here because there is very specific way that I've got waveform set up. So we'll go to the settings tab. First of all, to the appearance page. In the clips area, I have show extra slip handles on clip headers turned off, and I have link clip color to track color turned on. In the general tab, we have enable the separate edit cursor turned on. Now down in the mouse section here, in the tracks area drag mode, drag to draw marked region. That is the I-beam cursor version of this. These are your two primary modes down here, and I'm going to keep it in the drag to draw marked region mode. So the way this setup works is I have the I-beam cursor so I can make selections to easily remove sections, and it just works better for this workflow. So we're gonna get started here, and for the beginning of this, I'm going to just cut this off. So I can just drag like this and just hit delete, so that cuts that off. Now if I wanted to, I could create a little fade into the whole thing so I've got a nice silent beginning. Chapter eight. Now let's go to a couple of settings we need to do here in the arrangement area. First of all, on the timeline, you wanna right click on the timeline, go to the time base and set that to seconds. So we want the time base set to seconds. Also on the timeline, right click, make sure 
snap to grid is not enabled. Now sometimes, some voiceovers, you need to have a certain amount of time at the beginning. Now we're out here at three seconds where this starts. I've had voiceover work where you need about a half a second at the beginning. So you can just take this, just grab from the header and drag it back to where we're right about at the half second mark, if that's the case. I'm not gonna worry about leveling so much right now. I will deal with that later. If you want the waveforms to appear a little bigger, you can just bump up the gain a little bit to make those waveforms a little better, to hear it a little better as well. So now we're gonna start working through this. Chapter eight, the edit tab. Now, I often edit and adjust the feel of the timing of the spaces so that gap was maybe a little bit too long. So here is a ripple delete. You draw the range, right click, and then here's ripple delete. Ripple delete can be done with a command backspace. I've also got another one in here too, but we're gonna use command backspace for that. And you can see that chops that little piece out. Now to continue playing from there, you can click back before that edit and then move forward. The edit tab. In this chapter, you will learn the layout of the edit tab. The edit tab is where most of the action occurs during recording editing, and producing your song. The edit tab. Now, I did a second take of that while doing my, my voice acting there. And this is a very common thing that will happen in this type of work. So what we do is we pick it up from the phrase, draw this right to here, and we're gonna use that Command, Backspace, Keyboard, Shortcut to do the ripple edit. So now we could click back here anywhere of the Edit tab. The Edit tab is where most of the action occurs during recording, editing, and producing your song. This chapter is important as you will learn the terminology for the waveform interface and objects used throughout the rest of this book. Now you could see there that I didn't really know what I was reading. So once I read through it once, I had a better idea what was going on. So we're gonna pick it up from there, but let's see what happens here. This chapter is important. This chapter is important, right? So here, I actually repeated that twice. I'm gonna pick up my edit right here, all the way back to here. Very common voice, voiceover editing here, and just chop that out. This chapter is important, as you will learn the terminology for the waveform interface and objects used throughout the rest of this book. Note, the keyboard shortcuts. Now I think that gap was a little bit too long, so I'll just take a little bit of that space out. Command, delete. Tap back the here. The rest of this book. Note, the keyboard shortcuts used in this chapter are based on the alternative key mappings under the settings, blah, 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 blah. That's not even true anymore, so I need to edit this out of the manual and I don't need it in this voiceover. And that, what I was talking about there is actually true. At the time that that document was originally written, you had to load different keyboard shortcuts, which is no longer the case. So I did actually remove that from the, the manual and I could then cut this entire piece out of the voice or version throughout the rest of this book. Parts of the waveform edit. The edit tab is made up of four main parts, the browser, the arrangement, the mixer, and the controls panel. The browser. The waveform browser relies, the waveform browser re So that looks like a little mouth noise there. The we don't want that. So if you have a little piece of mouth noise like that, I usually will just ripple, delete that out of there. If you have a section like this where you actually want to have a range of silence, then you can mark that, right click, and then use silence right here. What silence does is it just takes the gain all the way down. So if you wanna bring a little bit of natural room tone back into that, you could right click here, bump the gain up very slightly. Most of the time I would just leave that at dead silence. And the controls panel, the browser, the waveform browser, so it's a little bit too big of a gap. 
it's a natural problem with my speech style is I leave big gaps and so I have to edit these out all the time. Now you'll see that you can grab the edges of the range. It's really nice and smooth the way it works. Command and hit delete. The browser. The waveform browser relied the waveform browser resides along the all right, so I made a kind of a mistake there. And so again, this is the nature of this kind of editing. The browser. The waveform browser resides along the left side of the edit. All right, and I guess I decided that that was enough. I'll leave a little tail on here, but I'm going to make it silent. Like that. So now I've got the whole thing. The next thing we probably want to do is consolidate this into one piece. So one way to do that is to use the new consolidate tool. So we'll just grab from out here at the edge, drag all the way back to the beginning. That will pick up my half second intro, right click, and then do consolidate. And that quickly renders it down to one solid file. Chapter eight, the edit tab. In this chapter, you will learn the layout of the edit tab. The edit tab is where most of the action occurs during recording, editing, and producing your song. This chapter is important as you will learn the terminology for the waveform interface and objects used throughout the rest of this book. Parts of the waveform edit. The edit tab is made up of four main parts, the browser, the arrangement, the mixer, and the controls panel. The browser. The waveform browser results all right, this is all pretty good. There's a couple of, of these words that stick out a little bit too loud. We probably would normally pick this up with some sort of compression or limiting, but you can also do this. So highlight that. We're going to separate it out using split. Once we've separated it from split, then you select that, right click, and then you can take the gain down slightly for that one. See if it sounds natural though, the rest of this book. Parts of the waveform edit. Yeah, that, that worked great. There was another one, which is this, this one here. Sometimes when you're starting a phrase like that, you take a big breath, it comes out really a little bit too loud. So the way I would do this, right click, split, to clear this selection, you just click anywhere outside there. Click on the header, right click, and then you can take the gain down. Now that I've done a few more corrections on there, I can then heal across these, these gaps. So there is a new feature called heal. So you just draw across any of these breaks where you've done edits like that, right click, and then click heal. It takes out those gaps. Very nice. So I've done a little bit of leveling, taken out all the mistakes. I've silenced some things. I took out mouth noise. And now I've got my take that I want to export. I want to also export it at the correct levels. So waveform, waveform free, waveform OEM all have this pretty much built in. If we go down to the menu, so we click here for the menu, go to file, export render to a file. And that brings up this dialog box. Most of the time when I've had to submit files like that, they're required to be in mono, not stereo. So it's a common mistake to send them in in stereo and then they send them right back. So first thing we're gonna do is turn off stereo, render the marked region. That is a pretty good idea. So I'm gonna cancel this here. We'll set the out marker right here with the O. So if I set this flag here at the end, and that's the beginning right there. We'll go back and do this again. File, export, render to a file. We have this dialog box, so we're already in mono. We're gonna only render the marked region. That marked region is between the in flag and the out flag, or the left and right part of the loop. Now, for a typical ACX, ACX, which is the Amazon or Audible type books, you need to be 3 dB down from full scale. Same thing, 
for Voice Bunny if you've ever done any commercials or voiceovers for that place. So we will normalize this, however, and we're gonna set normalizing to minus three. So three dB down from full scale. It already re-rendered that. The format for most of these also is actually MP3. Whether you think that's a good idea or not, that's what it is. The quality needs to be set to constant bit rate 192 or higher. And I think 256 is what I've commonly done these things with. This sets where we're going to send this. So I am going to send it to the desktop. So we have voiceover demo one, export one, save. So here's the file on the desktop. Chapter eight, the edit tab. In this chapter, you will learn the layout of the edit tab. The edit tab is where most of the action occurs during recording, editing, and producing your song. This chapter is important as you will learn the terminology for the waveform interface and objects used throughout. So we've done our end-to-end -end recording. So in this video, I showed you how to set up for voiceover recording, how to do the recording, how to do the editing, and then how to mix it down to a file. There's a lot more you can learn about processing the files or adding compression or things like that, but these are the fundamental things you need to know to get started. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon.